Elijah, a Tishbite from Gilead in Transjordan, stood as one of Israel's most revered prophets. Despite no book dedicated to him, his life is extensively covered in the Bible, surpassing the coverage of many kings. He emerged as a significant figure in the 9th century, serving in the northern kingdom during the reigns of Ahab and his son Ahaziah. Such was his prominence that representatives sought John the Baptist, questioning if he was Elijah, emphasizing his crucial role in God's plan. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. His anticipated return before the great and terrible day of the Lord, as foretold, along with his presence on the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and the Lord, highlights his importance. Malachi 4 verse 5 While little is known about his background or family, biblical references place him from Gilead, likely having roots in Transjordan, 1 Kings 17 verse 1. Elijah showcased incredible physical endurance, notably outrunning Ahab's chariot from Mount Carmel to Jezreel, displaying exceptional fitness. His biblical accounts emphasize his dramatic appearance before King Ahab, proclaiming a drought at his word. Following this, he hid at the brook of Cherith, sustained by ravens delivering bread and meat. When the brook dried up, divine guidance led him to Zarephath in the territory of Sidon, where a widow miraculously provided for him, Luke 4 verse 26. Stories also depict his encounters with lepers and the revival of a widow's son, showcasing his connection to divine power. 1 Kings 17 verses 17 to 24. The pinnacle of his narrative features the showdown on Mount Carmel during the drought, 1 Kings 18. In a contest against the prophets of Baal, Elijah affirmed the power of the Lord, leading to a victorious display of God's might and subsequent rainfall. Elijah's life journey, marked by divine encounters and miraculous events, serves as a testament to faith, perseverance, and the undeniable power of God. His story, filled with triumphs and challenges, remains an enduring source of inspiration across generations. After three years of drought, the Lord instructed Elijah to meet Ahab. At that time, a severe famine gripped Samaria, prompting Ahab to seek grass to keep his livestock alive. Ahab enlisted Obadiah, a man who revered the Lord, known for hiding and providing for a hundred prophets during Jezebel's purges. Obadiah, on a reconnaissance mission, encountered Elijah. Terrified that revealing Elijah's presence to Ahab would result in his death. But Elijah reassured him, promising to present himself before Ahab that day. Upon their meeting, Ahab accused Elijah of being the troublemaker in Israel. Elijah countered, attributing the troubles to Ahab's abandonment of the Lord's commandments. A challenge was set to gather all Israel and the prophets of Baal and Asherah on Mount Carmel. Elijah questioned the wavering crowd, urging them to choose between the Lord and Baal. To determine the true God, two altars were prepared, with the prophets of Baal attempting to invoke their deity's fire without success. 
Elijah then repaired the Lord's altar, drenched it with water thrice, and prayed. The Lord answered with fire, consuming everything, affirming his supremacy. Following this, the prophets of Baal were captured and executed. Elijah predicted rain, sending Ahab away. He prayed for rain on Mount Carmel, sending his servant seven times to the sea. On the seventh try, a small cloud emerged, signaling imminent rain. As a storm brewed, Elijah, powered by the Lord, outran Ahab's chariot. Learning of the prophet's fate, Jezebel vowed to kill Elijah. Overwhelmed, Elijah fled, exhausted and despondent, but an angel provided food and strength, sustaining him for forty days as he journeyed to Mount Horeb. On Mount Horeb, God revealed himself to Elijah, instructing him to anoint Hazael as king of Aram, Jehu as king of Israel, and Elisha as his successor. Elijah, rejuvenated and refocused, returned to fulfill God's directives. Elijah found himself in a cave, receiving the word of the Lord. He was questioned about his presence there, to which he replied, expressing his zeal for the Lord despite feeling alone in his faithfulness. Then, the Lord directed him to stand before him on the mountain. The Lord passed by, not in the powerful wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a still, small voice. Elijah, hearing this, covered his face, stepping out of the cave, and was addressed again, questioned about his presence. Elijah reiterated his zeal for the Lord, and the Lord instructed him to return, anointing Hazael as king over Syria, Jehu as king over Israel, and Elisha as his successor. Moving forward, Elijah found Elisha plowing with oxen. He cast his mantle over him, and Elisha, after a brief farewell to his parents, followed Elijah, becoming his servant. Later, Elisha anointed Hazael as the king of Syria and prophesied about the atrocities he would commit against Israel. Afterward, Elisha encountered King Ben-Hadad, who sought healing. Although Elisha foretold the king's recovery, he knew Ben-Hadad would ultimately die. Following this, Elisha went to Ahab and Naboth. Naboth owned a vineyard near Ahab's palace. Ahab desired the vineyard, but Naboth refused to sell, causing Ahab distress. Jezebel intervened, plotting Naboth's death by false accusations and manipulation of the city's leaders. Naboth was stoned to death, and when Jezebel learned of this, she saw it as an opportunity. After Naboth's death, Jezebel informed Ahab that the vineyard was now his. When the Lord spoke to Elijah, he directed him to confront Ahab at Naboth's vineyard, where Ahab had gone to take possession. Elijah accused Ahab of murder and declared God's judgment upon him and Jezebel, foretelling their violent deaths. In another instance, Ahaziah, Ahab's son, fell from an upper room and sought guidance from a foreign god, prompting Elijah to intercept his messengers and declare God's punishment. Ahaziah then sent a contingent of soldiers to arrest Elijah, resulting in two groups being consumed by fire. A third group approached humbly, and Elijah accompanied them safely. Later, Elijah personally prophesied the death of Ahaziah, which came to pass as predicted. 
As Elijah prepared to be taken up into heaven, he journeyed with Elisha from Gilgal to Bethel and Jericho. Despite Elijah's attempts to proceed alone, Elisha refused to leave his side, and they encountered groups of prophets along the way who knew that Elijah's departure was imminent. Elisha requested a double portion of Elijah's spirit, which Elijah promised if Elisha witnessed his departure. Eventually, a chariot and horses of fire separated them, and a whirlwind carried Elijah away. Elisha, now endowed with Elijah's mantle, was acknowledged by the sons of the prophets in Jericho. Later, Jehu fulfilled Elijah's prophecy by exterminating the house of Ahab, killing Ahab's relatives and executing judgment upon those associated with Ahab's descendants. He also met Jehonadab and demonstrated his zeal for the Lord by eliminating the remaining followers of Ahab in Samaria, as prophesied by Elijah. Moreover, when King Joram of Judah deviated from the right path, Elijah sent him a letter warning of impending disaster due to his wrongdoing. This passage recounts Elijah's journey with Elisha from Gilgal to Bethel and Jericho, where Elijah is about to be taken up into heaven. At each stop, Elijah tells Elisha to stay behind, but Elisha insists on accompanying him. The sons of the prophets at Bethel and Jericho know that Elijah will depart soon. As they cross the Jordan River, Elijah asks Elisha what he desires before his departure. Elisha asks for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, which Elijah says he'll receive if he witnesses Elijah's departure. When a chariot and horses of fire separate them, Elijah is taken up into heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha cries out, and he tears his own clothes in grief. He takes up Elijah's mantle and crosses the Jordan, where the sons of the prophets recognize that Elijah's spirit rests upon Elisha. Subsequently, Jehu fulfills Elijah's prophecy about the downfall of Ahab's house, annihilating all associated with Ahab in Jezreel. He also encounters the brothers of Ahaziah, kills them, and fulfills the prophecy spoken by the Lord to Elijah. Elijah also sends a letter to King Joram of Judah, warning of impending disaster due to his wrongdoing. These events detail Elijah's departure and the subsequent events that unfold as his prophecies come to pass through individuals like Jehu and in relation to the kings of Israel and Judah. Elijah's life was deeply intertwined with the conflict between the worship of the Lord and the religion of Baalism. During Ahab's reign, the dominant deity was Baal Melkart, particularly promoted by Jezebel, Ahab's wife, who persecuted the Lord's prophets and championed the Baal cult. The drought challenged Baal's supposed power as a nature god, contrasting with God's ability to protect his faithful, demonstrated through Elijah's survival in Baal's territory. The showdown on Mount Carmel led Israel to a decision, revealing the supremacy of revealed religion over Baalism. Elijah's flight took him to Mount Horeb, an earlier site of revelation. The Naboth incident highlighted revealed religion's moral superiority, and his encounter with Ahaziah showcased the God of Israel's might over Ekron's God, Baalzebub. Elijah, a prophet and spokesman for the one true God, continues to appear in the Bible beyond his lifetime. 
His predicted return before the Lord's Day finds fulfillment in different instances, including John the Baptist's role and interpretations about his return by Jesus and others. Jesus, for instance, identified John the Baptist as the one who came in the spirit and power of Elijah, yet some mistook Jesus for Elijah during his crucifixion. Elijah also appeared during the transfiguration alongside Moses, discussing Jesus' forthcoming departure. Paul referenced Elijah, emphasizing the principle of a remnant of faithful worshipers in Israel during his time. Elijah's unwavering devotion to God made him a fearless advocate for righteousness, despite his moments of human frailty, demonstrated in his flight from Jezebel's threats. His life showcased the power of prayer, as seen in his fervent prayers for drought and rain upon the land. Elijah's character was multifaceted, he was an enthusiastic religious leader, a devoted patriot, and a zealous servant of God, yet he also revealed human aspects. Despite this, his legacy as a man of God remains an enduring testament to faith, prayer, and unwavering dedication to the one true God. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.